Human Rights Watch recently accused Israel of perpetrating a form of apartheid, the racist legal system that once governed South Africa, citing a number of laws and regulations that it said systematically discriminate against Palestinians. Israel vehemently rejected that charge. But its security forces are now confronted with a swelling wave of fury from the country's Arab-Israeli minority, which complains of being treated as second-class citizens. Coexistence means that both sides exist, said Tamer Nafer, a famous rapper from Lod. But so far there is only one side, the Jewish side. The rocket attacks from Gaza are also quantitatively and qualitatively different from the last war in 2014. The more than 1,800 rockets Hamas and its allies have fired at Israel since Monday already represent a third of the total fired during the seven-week war in 2014. Israeli intelligence has estimated that Hamas, Islamic Jihad and other Palestinian militant groups have about 30,000 rockets and mortar projectiles stashed in Gaza, indicating that despite the Israeli-Egyptian blockade of the coastal territory, the militants have managed to amass a vast arsenal. The rockets have also demonstrated a longer range than those fired in previous conflicts, reaching as far as Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. They have also proven more effective. In the 2014 war, they killed a total of six civilians inside Israel, the same number killed in the last three days. Those casualties appeared to be a product of Hamas's new tactic of firing more than 100 missiles simultaneously, thwarting the American-financed Iron Dome missile defense system, which Israeli officials say is 90% effective at intercepting rockets before they land inside Israel. Gaza residents have no such protection against Israeli airstrikes, which crushed three multi-story buildings in the Strip after residents were warned to evacuate. Israeli officials said that the buildings housed Hamas operations and that they were striving to limit civilian casualties, but many Gaza residents viewed the Israeli attacks as a form of collective punishment. Thursday was supposed to be a day of celebration for Palestinians as they marked the end of the holy month of Ramadan, a day when Muslims typically gather to pray, wear new clothes and share a family meal. In Jerusalem, Tens of thousands of worshippers gathered at dawn outside the Aqsa Mosque, some waving Palestinian flags and a banner showing an image of Ismail Haniyeh, the leader of Hamas. In Gaza, though, it was a somber day of funerals, fear and missile strikes. Some families buried their dead, others laid out prayer mats beside buildings recently destroyed in Israeli airstrikes, and still others came under attack from Israeli drones hovering overhead. Save me, pleaded Mason al Hadu, 58, after she was wounded in a missile strike outside her daughter's house in Gaza, according to a witness. An ambulance arrived moments later, but it was too late. Ms. al Hadu was dead. American and Egyptian diplomats were heading to Israel to begin de escalation talks. Egyptian mediators played a key role in ending the 2014 war in Gaza, but this time there is little optimism they can achieve a quick result. Israeli military officials have said their mission is to stop the rockets from Gaza, and the military moved tanks and troops into place along the border with Gaza on Thursday in preparation for a possible ground invasion.